of what this is sinking the feeds energy because i you're right. the, you save it joe and i get it hey we are ready to go so let's all quiet down there three <laughs> simmer down three two one <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Comic Book Club. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Alex. I'm Justin. I'm Pete. And we are coming to you from locations throughout the United States, secret yes. locations that we can't talk about, though. We do kind of talk about it pretty much every week. Fellas, how you doing out there? How you holding Fellas. up? Fellas! Fellas! Nice. Classic Beastie Boy. Yeah. uh entrance uh for yes us. wait i do have a question before we start actually and we do have two amazing guests for you all this episode which we'll get to in a moment Evil but the most Justin. important the most pressing thing pete uh -oh. did you go and get the recommended cheesesteak in I philadelphia bibbles man it was uh it was a busy place uh it was nice to see it uh open uh there was a line and people were respecting uh you know this Six feet apart, so that was cool. That's definitely uh, what people want to know about Ishka Bibbles. Were the was the line appropriately socially distanced? <laughs> Say nothing of the cheesesteak, only of I'm, the PPE <laughs> and tactics. Oh. So I'm trying to let people know that they respect you when you go there. It's a safe nice. place. Oh, you okay. can go there, eat safely. Uh, but the food is fantastic. Solid steak, bread was really fresh, which I was happy about. Got the whiz. Um, yeah, I, I inhaled it and, uh, it was nice. glorious and, uh, Liwana got the eggplant parm. I tried sampled the sauce. You got to sample the marinara. You know what I mean? Like a place is, you, you don't got good marinara. You should just close down. You're going to got good marinara. You're going to close down. No. How's the gravy? You got to taste it. Got a gravy, Sunday gravy. Yeah. When I, when I think of a cheesesteak place, the main thing I want to know is how's the marinara? That's if I don't see that. <laughs> I usually I go to the Yelp page for a cheesesteak place and I find marinara and if it doesn't show up, I, I just give it a bad review out of yeah. anti-courtesy, whatever the opposite yeah. of courtesy is. Anti-courtesy. Wow. <laughs> anti nice. That's what dark side's into, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I prefer anti-courtesy. Yeah, Pete, uh, someone raises a good point. Uh, ben, the uh, true hero of something, says, um, <laughs> what is the Subway sauce, uh, the marinara sauce at Subway like? It's... Uh, it's got tomatoes in it. You know what I mean? Hey. <laughs> so it's there. You know. Nice. Whose grandmother's stirring it in the back? Yeah, is it no, uh, nobody's? Nona. <laughs> Nona Subway's not there mixing it up. <laughs> That's a good slogan, though. Subway. It's there. <laughs> It's there I mean, when you need it. That's never been more accurate uh, than it is right now. Subway. It's there. So, as mentioned, we do have two amazing guests for you all, two great comic creators on the show tonight. Uh, we are going to get to all of your questions later, so if you're listening at home, sorry, buddy, you're out of luck. But if you are watching this <laughs> live, well, I'm just saying, it, it's going to be too late for the questions Don't of the show. Don't insult start... the people listening at home. People listening at home, I'm sorry. If they Hour try to live, take, it's if great to have you. Into their podcast app on iTunes, it's just not going to get here to the show on time. Wow. It's just not what a logistics, happen. man. You got to think about, the, you got to believe if someone whispers a question into their Apple iPhone microphone, we may, through a miracle of Apple, we mm -hmm. may just hear it. Uh, I, I got to say, somebody called you evil Justin in this uh, little comments, and it's really cracking me up every time you talk. I'm like, what? What happened to the real Justin, and why well, is evil Justin here? I will say, I've grown um, what. Like a, a future person might call a beard, like a a child beard. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's my first beard is what it's you're right. First beard, daddy's yeah. first beard. Um, and I think I, but I feel more evil. I don't look as maybe evil, but I feel evil. <laughs> yeah. Well, you look it. What I was going to say was there's two places you can ask questions right now. You can drop questions on Crowdcast and ask a question over on YouTube. Don't forget to give us a little bit of a thumbs up. Give us a like there and also drop your questions in the comments. We are going to keep our eyes on that. Uh, but first, I'm going to attempt to uh, bring one of our guests 
into the feed right now. Let's yes. see if this works. Hopefully it does. Um, now, if it does work, we are going to be chatting with Kyle Latino, who is the creator of Oni Press's The Savage Beard of She-Dwarf. And here he yeah. is. Yeah. How's it going, Kyle? So far, so good. <laughs> that's the spirit. All right. All I mean, right. that's. I mean, that's just basically, yeah. Still, uh, you know, still, still ticking. I guess. <laughs> you answered that question like we're talking about your entire life. You know. Let's just say it's a weird day. So, so Shedorf, um, uh, Shedorf launched today, and I launched that comic as a web comic five years ago. So I'm wow. kind of having like this whole like slide. Yeah show of the past five years uh in the past five months uh going on right now so yeah that, there's probably a little bit i loaded a little bit more into that answer than i ought to have <laughs> no i love uh, it putting the drama star dramatic that's why i keep yeah. these uh garden murder <laughs> weapons right here and now there's a rope there that's weird a rope <laughs> yeah that just appeared right you didn't put that you have like there. a whole clue set up back there uh, yes it was yeah, Justin I, with the garden shears <laughs> in the basement. Tonight, this will be a big clue, and you're gonna. Have, there's gonna be some detective work required oh. to solve this murder. Uh, uh, go ahead, Pete. I, I read the whole yeah. thing. I was really impressed. Uh, love the art, the storytelling. That was a really fun, great story. And pro bath, man. You know, people should be taking baths. You know, don't <laughs> rush it with the shower. You know, relax. You deserve it. Yeah, especially these days. I mean, what a wonderful way to uh, what a wonderful way to slow down and and just kind of like take care of yourself and just spend time away from video screens and everything. And just like, yeah, I have I have like lush uh, tips if 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 you want to get in on like what's the intro level bath bomb look like. I, I'm here oh, for that. I can tell oh, by yeah. the comments <laughs> that you knew your stuff. It was very clear. Let's hear it. Back it up. Give us the bath bomb. Um, so I'm a big fan of lavender and bath bombs. I think that's amazing. Uh, a lot of people don't like <laughs> glitter and bath bombs. I'm a huge glitter and bath bombs fan really? myself. Really? Uh, my yeah, my favorite that's bath problematic. bomb. Problematic. Yeah. Well, no, I see. I like, I like, especially before the, before the, uh, 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 Backstreet Boys reunion tour, or, or I guess, we're, are we allowed? To, do we have to talk in code, or do do we get like downvoted if we talk about the world events right now? No, 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 there's no, no voting out here. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So the uh, so yeah, mind, with the, before the pandemic, I was rocking this big beard. I was growing out for the book tour and everything, and now that's uh, awesome. Something uh, I've got here. It's like a real big beard, like this guy here. <laughs> Yeah, and there you go, just like that. And it would look even better with some glitter in it. So, oh, um, I love that. yeah, yeah. So, let Don't me go. get this straight. You like it when you jump into a bath and then come out looking like, uh, you know, Rainbow Bright's sidekick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, what? yeah, I, I do. I was, it was, that was the only, the sparkly men was the only thing I enjoyed about, uh, about the Twilight movies. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and let me say, it's proof that you're clean. You're covered in glitter. You're shiny. There you go. Like, exactly. It's like, <laughs> how, I don't know. When how I you. Sparkling clean. It doesn't get it. It's, it's right there. That. It's right there. <laughs> So this is probably a great time to establish what your book is about. Uh, Savage sure. Beard right. of Sheep Dwarf. <laughs> not just about bath bobs, not just about taking baths. Uh, it's actually a very fun fantasy book, as you mentioned, and I'd love to talk about a little bit more. You had been doing it as a webcomic. Eventually, it has become this graphic novel that was released today through Oni Press. Um, the thing that I think is really fun about it is... On the front, when I got into it in the first couple of pages, I thought, oh, cute. It's like this cute all-ages title about a little she-dwarf who comes into town and goes and adventures. And in the first couple of pages, she's having a beard fight. And I was like, oh, still pretty cute. And then she rips the beard off the guy. And you pepper that so <laughs> nicely throughout the book that it is this very Lord of the Rings-style fantasy. But also there's this gruesome, over-the-top violence yeah. at the same time uh talk a little bit about the tone that you're going for here what the initial inspiration was ah boy that tone um so it, like i said it started as a webcomic and it was kind of like a big like almost like a breakup ballad uh, to to the publishing industry it was like I, I i'd been spinning my wheels in in comic publishing for a long time so i was like i'm just gonna do the comic that nobody's gonna be give me permission to do 
I'm going to do it all myself. And, you know, maybe I, I had some Patreon supporters, um, but I never expected it for it to get picked up. Uh, so, so as a result, like that, that's why I think, um, one might, one might, uh, one might call that tonal inconsistency, just kind of like an idiosyncratic, uh, the, na the nature of just kind of doing comics that amused me. It was like, whenever I got bored or I felt like things were going slow or whenever I got excited about an idea, I just put it on the next page. Um, so that's, I, that's, I think that's, that's why when you, <laughs> that's why it looks like this, like all ages, like, you know, uh, Jack Kirby meets, um, anime kind of like, uh, friendly, colorful style, but then also you have in chapter two, uh, a, a wolf bat dragon gets impaled in the middle of an exploding volcano by a stalactite and it's just like where is this even coming from <laughs> that's probably why it was just because it was just it was just coming off the dome every time i had to sit down and make a page i was like i'm gonna make this the best page i know how to so yeah i, I love that about it though i feel like that's where so much of our entertainment is right now is like being able to move beyond the genre and being able to tonally combine a bunch of things because it feels like we've seen we're we're moving past just like existing within uh, specific tones and genres, and now it's time to like mash them up, and it feels right because you're telling the specific story. Yeah, and I and I I love to see people kind of like yeah chase down their own, um, especially in web comics. Uh, I, I th the two comics that I read most religiously, and like I'm always looking forward to the updates, are two comics that I found when I was researching for. Um, for how to do a fantasy webcomic. And they are um, The Wildlife uh, by Pascal and uh, uh, Daughter of the Lilies um, by uh, Meg, goes by Blue Dragon Girl on uh, on Twitter. And uh, both of those are, are so much about the creator's own points of view and their values for not only storytelling, but like what's a good person do in kind of like a busted up world. Um, and and I, I try to I tried to answer that question uh, in my own story and yeah it's it's uh, you you might have learned a little bit too much like about my bathing habits for instance. <laughs> <laughs> no, we learned much. not enough, not enough. Expand <laughs> that section for the extended edition. Uh, what was it like taking it from the web comic to the graphic novel? What had to change? What did you have to tweak? What was different about the process? Uh, well, the big the big thing is uh, once once we got into go mode for like okay, this book is is definitely happening now. Um, so I, I I originally signed with uh, Lion Forge that then got bought by Oni, um, and then so once that kind of settled settled and it turned out that I they that they they were still going to um, print the book, um, I had hand lettered everything. Um, which is wonderful way to like put a lot of expression in, but it also makes it like hell to to like uh, copy edit. <laughs> so like any kinds of changes would either have to I would have to go through and rewrite all of the changes myself, or they what they decided to do was just digitally reletter the whole comic um, to make sure that there were no there there were no spelling errors, that all the dialogue kind of like lined up, and that. Um, uh, it was readable because, like you know, when you're when you're being expressive, sometimes legibility isn't like the number one priority. Uh, so that was the big thing, and that's one of the big reasons why the last bit is not. If you go to shedwarf.com, you can read all the way up until like the last half of the last chapter. Um, but uh, uh, the reason that the rest of it isn't on there is because it was digitally lettered, and like the 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 hand lettered version of those pages don't exist. Um, so that's, and, and, and also there's a, there's a book I would rather people buy. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, if you want to know how the story ends, that's classic sales that's technique. Good. Classic yeah. sales that, that's the big thing. That's the big thing. And then also like just recognizing that I had to then own some of the, some of the story decisions that I made, um, earlier on, <laughs> uh, and, and where it was like, originally it was supposed to be kind of like, a each chapter was going to be kind of a standalone Conan kind of episode. But then once it, once it was a book, it was like, no, this has to go somewhere. There needs to be a beginning, middle and end arc, uh, all the way through this. Um, so I did have to kind of like put, 
put whatever like the simmering C plot was and make that the A plot because that was the only like book plot that I had uh, in mind. So that those were two big changes is lettering and just like overall like um, plotting out the book to be like a satisfying graphic novel read. Do you feel yeah. like at this point, now that you're past this, do you have more She Dwarf in you? Are there other stories you want to tell? Do you want to take it back to the web and tell some shorter stories? Uh, what are you thinking? I, I think, um, I think <laughs> that's kind of, that's a huge question. Is the thing? It's like, right, I, and I realize I, it's seven o'clock on the day that yeah, your book is released. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Alex, let him have a minute. Is that, yeah, what my parents used to do to me. <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's the egg next? timer uh like a, like it's a board game uh yeah it was it's i think one of the things i'd rather do is get more into like tabletop gaming design um and putting out mm. supplements and stuff like that and helping other people tell their stories with me as opposed to kind of like this top down like i i am the auteur celebrate all of my great ideas it's like giving mm. giving people little pieces of stories that they can that they can share with themselves or or with their friends or um that kind of stuff so that that's kind of where my head's at but i also just finished up an mfa program where i was studying game design for two years so this right right now that's my answer yeah <laughs> yeah, oh, that's uh, cool. I mean, that sort of touches on something that I thought was really nice to hear in, in the end note to the book, where, as you talked about a little earlier in the interview on the podcast, uh, you started this as like, well, I'm going to do this all by myself. This is going to be my comic. And then by the end you realized actually there's a whole group of people that need to get involved no matter what. And that just feels like an important lesson for anything. It's also an important lesson for people who like to watch and commentate on art and look at it as like, Oh, the director of the film, it's all them. Mm. You know, the the person who writes the comic, it's all them, but it's actually a lot more than that. Well, and even, even going further than that, like the way that we talk about brands, um, the way we say like, oh, Marvel movies versus DC movies or Marvel comics versus DC comics or um, it, it's just like that the brands aren't generating anything. They're they're controlling the conversation to I think to a point that we want to give them the credit. They don't they don't correct us when we speak about art that way. But no, it's made by a, a series of like talented um, uh, individuals that all have their own kind of uh, their own contributions to it. Yeah. That's yeah. why my big complaint with the release the Snyder Cut movement is they don't list like the key grip. It should be released as <laughs> Snyder, the, Davis, the boy. <laughs> Jackson. It should mm -hmm. be everyone's name in that cut, not just him. Yeah, you know right. we'll get a we'll get a hashtag trending after the show with <laughs> everybody oh, involved. Hashtag a the huge hashtag. Cut. I love yeah. it. <laughs> uh, what's next for you? Uh, do you have anything lined up? Any other comics that you're working on? Yeah, so I'm I'm kicking around some comic ideas. I'm kicking around some RPG ideas, um, but also I am I, I like I said I, I also just finished uh, an MFA program, um, so I'd really like to get into teaching as yeah. well. You got um, to use that. I really find yeah yeah that's a good, <laughs> I got to figure out some way to make that pay for itself. Uh, <laughs> exactly. As if comics wasn't lucrative enough. Yeah, uh, man, I got all that this money. Story. Yeah, but um, I mean, comics uh, is a way of teaching, and that's that's the way I was teach uh, treating She Dwarf in the first place. So yeah, the, the next is just kind of figuring out like what, uh, how do I, how do I teach, how do I inspire, how do I move forward creatively in kind of the world gone wrong that we're living in right now. So I, I don't have any like set answers, um, but yeah, hopefully this book does so well that the obvious answer will be. Uh, she yeah. dwarf book two. Throw yeah. a lot of money at me. I'll That's do it. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, exactly. there we go. Uh, Kyle, thank you so much for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Amazing book. Everybody, go pick it up. Yeah, it's a great book. Great and, to, uh, to you. Stay you sparkly. Stay sparkly. <laughs> Enjoy a good bath after this. You deserve yeah. it. Relax <laughs> into a bath. <laughs> All right, so Kyle. Nice. I, love that, I love that phrase you said. Uh, how it's hard to be creative in this world gone wrong that we all live in. I feel like that is. <laughs> some real lot that's, that's some shit that's right there right there yeah yeah we gotta hold on uh, and once again that's savage beard of she dwarf from oni press it's out today definitely go check it out pick it up yeah uh it's and meanwhile up. let's invite our next guest into the show what do you guys say sound yeah. good let's all right uh, this is uh tom payer he is uh the writer of ahoy's dragonfly and dragonfly man tom payer everybody hey, hey. hey. hi how you doing well, 
Oh, it is. Good. good. Happy Dragonfly Man Day. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Dragonfly Man to all of you as well. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Uh, I love the, uh, first of all, this doesn't matter to anybody on the podcast, but I, I love the Ahoy Comics uh, life preserver that you have in the background yeah. there. That's pretty cool. Curated backdrop. Thank you. <laughs> it's a, it's a, how do you say it? Trample? Trample? It's a, it looks like it's puffing out, but it is flat as a board. What? Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. It That's, you've revealed the, your illusion. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> magic of the movies going on right there yeah uh so tom uh let's talk about dragonfly and dragonfly man uh we this is a prequel to the wrong earth which is an amazing book we've talked about it on the show before yeah, yeah. Let's talk about dragonfly and dragonfly man a little bit uh the basic pitch is like what if adam west's batman met uh, I don't know, like Nolan's Batman, maybe, or some I don't other. Know these people you're talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been informed by my lawyers that I've never heard of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Should we call him like Mr. Pointy Ears or something like that? <laughs> no, I, actually, I'll, it is. It has a lot to do with Batman '66, and I, I think about the Ben Affleck Batman a lot, who actually was such a bastard that he branded people. Yeah. Uh, with a hot bat made of metal, and I probably just said a bad word. I'm sorry. It'd be it'd be hard to explain that away in your life after that happened to you. It really would be. I mean, yeah, yeah. Especially anyway, when people were like, uh, "Which Batman branded you?" and you had to be like the Ben Affleck Batman. <laughs> and it wasn't even. He's like, well, you, no, everybody didn't know which Batman branded you. Because <laughs> uh, uh, none of the, none of the other ones would do it. Yeah, but. The, <laughs> Dragonfly Man, it, it, there's a lot of 66 Batman in there, but every superhero before the invention of Wolverine was just like this. They were all this upstanding, this flag saluting, this safe for children. They lived under the, the comics code was their constitution, you know, the, doc, the long document of censorship. And um, so I can mine Green Arrow and Ant Man for gags too, because they were all like that. And it's the same with the. Bullies and uh, ultra violent stick it to the man heroes who emerged in the eighties and afterwards. Um, so what you uh, with the wrong Earth? Uh, the idea there is that the two of them switch. Obviously, like they go to other Earths. So why go back in time at that point? Why tell this story as a prequel? Well, because we wanted to see a couple of reasons. One is we really I wanted to explore what their lives were like before the switch because we met them like eight pages before the switch. <laughs> so we never got to spend time with them and how they interacted with the worlds they were comfortable in and their own sidekicks, and their own police department. And um, so it seemed like there was a lot of material there. And also Jamal Igel, the co-creator of their own, yes. had to go away and draw another comic book for a year mm -hmm. that he'd been obligated previously to do. So I didn't want to, even think about trying to continue the wrong earth without him. But we could go on this side story, this prequel, uh, with Peter Krause and Ross Braun, who both did amazing work. Yeah, I mean, that's an amazing art team, too. Uh, is, is this the sort of thing where you're telling a bigger story over all of the titles, or is Dragonfly and Dragonfly Man its own thing and not necessarily going to feed into the wrong earth, too, or whatever's coming next? Right. I think... I. I'm trying to get it so they add to each other, but you don't have to read one to read the other, mm. uh, to understand or appreciate the other. But yeah. there, is, there are spots that you'll appreciate a little more if you have read the wrong word. Yeah. Uh, what is it about these characters specifically that you find funny? Like, obviously, a lot of both of the books is leading <laughs> into these gags. Uh, but what, what draws you to each of them individually, uh, Dragonfly and Dragonfly Man? Well, they're, they're both so sure of themselves, which is always hilarious when someone is sure of themselves. <laughs> and they both, uh, I think they both think that their way to do things is the only way to do it, which means they both have this great well of ignorance to uh, other people's points of view in other ways. So you can always find something. But superheroes are always making kind of speeches, whether it's the old-fashioned, you know, 
eat your vegetables, citizen, you know, or, or the <laughs> more newfangled, uh, you know, uh, the Constitution is tying my hands, you know. But <laughs> the thing about all superheroes is they all seem to really love the sound of their own voice. So which side uh, of that which side of that divide do you like find yourself on uh, as a comic fan? Are you uh, well, <clears throat> good? I'm trying to love both sides because I want to write yeah. it fairly, and, I, and people tell me that it seems to be working. Um, look at me, look at my age. Obviously, I'm a Silver Age guy, and that's, <laughs> that's my comfort food. Because when you're seven, eight years old, and you read a comic book. The pictures in that comic book burn themselves into the bracket, back of your brain for hours. Yes, now. that's true. And they, yeah. be, and they become your uh, your your definition of art, and uh, mm-hmm. there's no way I can get away from that. But uh, they're really, I mean, who's going to say the Dark Knight was a bad book or uh, stuff that came after? Talking in a much broader sense, uh, how is Ahoy Comics doing right now? Obviously, uh, comics are slowly starting to get back to relative normal, whatever normal means right now, but it's been a very weird time for the comic book industry. There's been lots of big changes. Uh, how are you guys holding up? Well, as I, as I told someone else before the... Uh, I'm the my title at Ahoy is Editor-in-Chief, and before the pandemic happened and the isolate, you know, sheltering a place happen. I had no idea how much editors in chief, how much time they spend every morning looking for their pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I can really understand now what Stan Lee must have gone through in the early days of Marvel. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's why most of the characters ripped their pants is because he was dealing with that struggle. I hate these pants. <laughs> yeah. But uh, to answer your question, it's our publisher, Hart Seeley is great. And, uh, uh, when this started, and through all of it, he never said pencils down. Uh, we've been paying with no money coming in. We've been paying people to work throughout, and uh, I really oh, awesome. appreciate great. and admire that about him. And now we're getting to where we can publish things again. And um, we'd started a book, uh, series by Mark Russell and Steve Pugh, the old Flintstones team. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, nice. Called Billionaire Island, and one issue of that, yes. and, and this hit. So three months later, we're putting out number two, and uh, we're keep an eye on us because we're going to find a way to get let people read issue one for All free. Right. Oh, nice. What What I love about Ahoy Comics specifically um, is that uh, that sort of like satirical comedic but still delivering on superhero action and mm-hmm. you know rooted in superhero comics but really being irreverent and because I feel like that's something that's missing in so many comics is a real like sense of humor that isn't just like oh it's a little joke here and there it's a spider-man quip it's like a real like base in humor satire and comedy and you guys are the only company out there I feel like really doing that thank you that's where I feel like that's what we've always tried to make our mark there every we have a few criteria for Hawaii comics they've got to look professional they have to look a little better. They've looked better than that. They have to look terrific. Um, the story has to be about something you can't read anywhere else. But mainly, it, it has to have a sense of humor. Every Yohoi comic has to be funny on some level. They don't have to be comedies, but they have to be funny on some level. And because to me, that's the straightest line to entertainment. And, yeah. Um, uh, there seem to be, you know, when you, it seems like there are a lot of, uh, considerations in comics sometimes that come in ahead of entertainment. You know, we've got to, we can't mm-hmm. contradict the continuity. We've got to move like the universe forward yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. And you can get so bogged down. That it's not, it's really not very entertaining. Uh, we got a question here actually from the comments for you from Stray Bullet. Uh, he says, I was curious what Mr. Payer thinks about the DC Diamond break. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that one? I worry more about the food chain, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> that's smart. That's heads up thinking. It's a good question. Uh, the, I'll tell you, the, um, the I am a really good person to come to uh, about story and about art, and, uh, but I'm, a, I'm the worst person you could come to about with a business question. If you <laughs> listen to me, you will starve. 
All right, appreciate there you your go. honesty. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, so, Dragonfly and Dragonfly Man is out now uh, mm -hmm. on stands. If stands still exist, I'm still not 100. We we finished the mini series. The book uh, collected edition was going to come out today, but due right. to some uh, conditions that arose from emerging from the pandemic and starting industry again. Uh, yeah. It's it, it's been moved to next week in comic oh, okay. shops, and then sure. July seventh in uh, at booksellers. And so, are you and Jamal at this point? Oh yeah, let's take a look. This is uh, Dragonfly and Dragonfly Man. I'll just yeah, uh, oh, yeah. it up so you can get a good look. I There's, remember those. Those are uh, print well, books. Is what yeah, they're wow. called. I haven't that's, seen that's, one in a while. That's paper. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's it's actual paper. Wow! Huh. Uh, Imagine that. We have a uh, Ash and Thorn number one coming out at the end of June, which is which was printed and has been sitting in Diamond's warehouse for three months. And we're oh, so wow. glad to get it out. It's by Mariah McCourt and Sue Lee, and it's about um, a monster apocalypse threatening the world, and the only people who can fight it are two elderly women. Which I guarantee you is a comic you have not read before. Yeah. No, no, that's great. And at this point, are you and Jamal, are you working on The Wrong Earth? Yeah, we're uh, working on another series of Wrong Earth. Okay. Yeah. Great. And cool. I'm so glad he's back and I'm so glad we're doing it. Awesome. Can't awesome. wait to read it. Tom, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on the book. Everybody should check it out. It's amazing. Thank you. Uh, it was have fun. a good time out there. Great time right. to you, Tom. Stay safe. All right. Uh, Dragonfly and Dragonfly Man from Ahoy Comics by Tom Payer. Definitely pick it up. It's great. I really can't oversell it enough. And yeah. Justin, like you were saying, all the high stuff is very, very good. Yeah. I mean, it really, like, we talked a lot about Mark Russell, and he's sort of, like, uh, maybe one of the higher profile writers over there. Um, and his tone, I think, they've really done a good job of, sort of bringing that into a lot of books or a lot of books are echoing his tone, which is this sort of irreverent uh, way of look. I mean, his Flintstones book was such a revelation despite the fact oh, that it was yeah. a Flintstones book. Yeah. Great stuff. Definitely check it out. And now it's time for my favorite section. Cause you all make it up. It's your audience question. <laughs> yeah. And for that, as mentioned earlier, there's two ways of getting your questions in. First one, just drop a question over in the YouTube comments. We'll keep an eye on that over on Crowdcast. Drop the something tube. and ask a question. Uh, did you say dude or do it? What did you just say? The tube. Oh, the tube. He said there the tube, go. as he does. It's all tubes, uh, man. The world's just tubes. That's when you think about tubes, it. Man. Uh, here we go. First one that popped up here from Eduardo Martinez. Are there any series that you think either ended too soon or went on for too long? If so, what were the series and why did you feel that way? Good mm. question. Mm. Series that ended too soon or went on too long? Hmm. Ended mm. too soon. I mean, uh, most comics end too soon, technically, I think. Uh, uh, I mean, some, <laughs> you know, you know, some uh, get to tell their full story, do their full thing. You know, I mean, the ones that get canceled maybe before, you know, they got to really get going that I agree with you. Um, but yeah, uh, we got a couple of answers here in the comments. A hundred bullets too long. Mm -hmm. maybe got a little bit in its head there at the end, but still great book. Uh, great Trans book. Metropolitan too long. Mm. Maybe <laughs> Gotham central too soon. Why the last man just, just right. right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, uh, here's one that I'll throw out. I mean, I feel like this is a little bit of a cheat and I've been talking about this a lot just because I'm reading Cheating. through the stuff in my bookcase, uh, but Jeff John's justice society is so good <laughs> it's great and then it gets to a like i got to the end of the volume and i was like wow what a great story let me see who took over next and then i realized and i had completely forgotten about this there were like 30 issues after that point after the point where like he wrapped up the whole black adam thing mm. where it went on for a little bit in the main title that they rebooted the title to be justice society of america and i remember so clearly that it was like 
this is still good, but it just uh, you you said what you needed to say on this title at this point. You can kind of move interesting. On. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised. Uh, I, I was going to say I'm surprised Alvin you didn't say Walking Dead because there's a couple issues in there you were losing your fucking mind with. You oh know, yeah, I, well I mean there was the killing Carl thing or shooting Carl in the face thing where I was like either way I'm done, and I still think there's stuff that I liked past that point, but I was not as emotionally involved in that title past the point that they shot Carl in the face because. They lost either way, either like they killed Carl and that's fucked up or the, he survived, which he did. And it was like, he had a hole in his head through his brain. How did he survive that? Yeah. So it, it cut through the reality of that zombie book a little bit. I yeah. thought you were going to go about, because there was like one issue where they walked to something and walked back and you kept like losing yeah. your mind about it. But I, yeah. I would also have to say about Walking Dead, so many people were like, thought it was too short because it cut so quickly with a surprise end if you remember um that mm -hmm. i think was shocked everyone um yeah that's I, true I, I was gonna say um fables i feel like went on a little long especially the crossover that i know alex you loved because you love jack of fables you love jack of fables uh more I than love jack of fables um, i i love jack of fables but you are right about fables there was a point when like they wrapped up the main story and then they yeah. kept going for probably another you know, 30 or 40 issues past that point. Uh, where still good, Mark Buckingham, amazing art. Um, but they'd already again, they had like finished up the story. They said they had the final battle and then it just kept going. I guess the biggest one that's going on too long is probably the family circus. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they already said what they needed to say. I think they've, I think they've covered it. That's like we, old. we've seen Jeffy wander through a lot of different backyards, <laughs> put it to bed. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we've got a couple of questions here over on YouTube. This is from Bandito Seven Forty. Once you guys get back to Bandito. the pit, is there? A any chance you will live stream the live show? I think it would be cool if you had Boothman Prime monitoring a live stream and maybe taking a couple of questions. Oh, so I'll, would be cool. funny thing about that, we used to do that. We used to yeah. actually, like back in the day, uh, when James Shaffrey was our Boothman, he used to live tweet the show Boothers. while like ripping us a new one for whatever oh, yeah. reason. <laughs> he hated us for some uh, reason. He really hated us, uh, but we liked him. Uh, he he would live tweet the show and take questions for people live as they tweet back at us. Um, but that said, in terms of like the whole getting back to the pit thing, I don't know when that's going to happen. <laughs> well, yes. I hope it does. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking about this. Like, how do we uh, put the toothpaste back in the tube, so to speak? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, I how am I going to ever leave this basement again? See the world. I like drinking at the big, very beginning of the show, and often my drink is out on the stage. Like, how am I? Yeah. Uh, what are we doing here? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll have to see what happens at this point. Like, Pete, there's no return date for the pit, right? They haven't said anything. And no, I was doing some yet. serious business in the middle of the <laughs> show. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I will say because it, like usually the first or second of the month, I'm like, hey, Pete, are we doing shows at the pit? He's like, ah, shit, they emailed me a week ago. So I figured <laughs> this is a good time to check. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say, like, think of what we're missing by not being in the same room. The smell of Pete's Punisher slippers. <laughs> hey, instance. those are professionally cleaned. Yeah. Do you say that a lot? But I don't. I feel like you clean them at Subway in the marinara sauce. That's what it feels like to me. No. No. Uh, I do miss. I do miss my Punisher slippers. Yeah, uh, I will tell you. Uh, Pete's Herogasm Lanyard, a great username by the way, says or hosting guys remotely like you're doing now. This is something we've wanted to do for years, but the Wi-Fi is terrible in the so pit bad. like awful pit. so we've times. never been able to do that the way that we've wanted to do that i say this by the way in five minutes i'll be cut off of the show or something like that but yeah uh we we'd love to do that we'd love to do more of that uh maybe we'll try to figure out something to do i would i would venture that i feel like we'll find a way to do the way the show was before and the way the show is now some sort of amalgam of both yeah that would I, I would like to do that I agree, uh, but not going to happen anytime soon. Sorry, right. folks. Um, here we got another one uh, actually from Pete's Herogasm Lanyard. I'll start by saying I'm thankful Comic Book Club exists. 
Thank you. Aww, I get to hang you. out with my smarter, funnier friends to talk comics, TV, movies, and so on. <laughs> what about the hosts? What does uh, doing these shows mean to you? Or as Uatu the Watcher might ask, what if Alex, Justin, and Pete never formed comic book club? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, That's wow. a dark dystopian future, probably. Yeah. yeah. I just can't That's imagine. A, That's a crazy world. I mean, I got to say, when I tell people who don't like know uh, me super well that I that we've been doing this show for like 14 years, every Tuesday, they're like, what? Why? <laughs> Why would you ever do that? And I do think that's a testament to how much we love doing it, love like coming together no matter what is happening to talk comics. Like we've done, like... <laughs> Think about it in relationship to how other people have relationships. We have a very long relationship. Yeah. <laughs> We're, this is a marriage. We're committed. Yeah. 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 What's crazy is like I had a moment where uh, somebody I performed with uh, for a long time came up to me. And he goes, I just got to tell you, man, I see you reading comics and doing your show. And I, t I wish I loved something as much as as you love the show. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know if I love the show, but it's And great. he was standing next to his wife at the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it really, I mean, to think about like what we put into it, you know, as far as like reading all these comics, you know, like uh, doing all this stuff and then doing the show, uh, I've never really stopped and, and thought about it. And that kind of moment kind of froze me in time. And I was just like, Oh wow, yeah, this does mean a lot to me, and it is something we've dedicated a shit ton of time uh, doing. So it's you know, as much as I yell at both of you and call you pieces of shit, uh, this is this is really nice. Oh man, Aww. what a great time to just hear sucking on a cheesesteak. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, come on, Justin. Uh, sorry, sucking I... on a cheesesteak. Uh, <laughs> sucking on a cheesesteak. Better than Justin did. Yeah, it was sucking better. on oh, a cheesesteak. I actually meant to stop it, and it just kept going. I will say it's especially funny um, when this week in our Slack, um, we were uh, Alex posted a link to some of our old videos that are on um, YouTube. If you go to YouTube uh, slash Pulp Secret. Um, I think they're still there, and we are fucking babies doing the same <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it's it really funny. has not changed at all. I, I will say specifically, Pete, you looked very fresh-faced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, I could believe also, frankly, like the shitty quality of those videos. Just we thought those were really good cameras. <laughs> cameras have gotten a lot better. Uh, this is better than the cameras we were using back then, frankly. Yes, and they were big cameras. Uh, but some of the bits are really fun. It was fun. Definitely. Yeah. Well, that's say the cameras are shitty, but we were doing some funny, weird ass shit back in yeah. those days. Yeah, good times. Good times. Thank you for that question. Yep. Uh, let's jump back to YouTube here. Uh, Nelson Martinez says, "Which character are you most interested in seeing more of in Star Girl?" For me, I'd say Dragon King. I'm super intrigued. Um, so we've been doing the star girl podcast, star guys that goes up Mondays, Monday mornings and Tuesday nights. It's been a lot of fun to talk about. Um, Pete, I'm betting you want to see more of dragon King, right? You gotta be fucking kidding me. It's a cross between Cobra commander and fucking Sepentor with like a little, <laughs> little dash of mortal combat. It's fucking oh, okay. phenomenal. And Our I Cobra commander and Serpentor. Those are two different characters. Who's yes, Serpentor? You... Yeah. Oh, I'm Fuck you both. You're I'm in the middle, so fuck you both, man. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh is he a, so, another He-Man person? Or is he what's he's he man G.I. Joe, you fucking you know this. You know it's G.I. Joe. I, I wasn't allowed to watch G.I. Joe, so I don't know. So yeah, what you're saying you yeah, yeah, because he's he's a combination I don't, I don't, of two. I don't watch military recruitment tools, Pete. <laughs> wow. wow. Tools of the US Army. No oh thanks. My God. Oh shit! All right, yeah. defund uh, the army. <laughs> <laughs> defund the GI Joes. I've been saying that for years. Defund I mean, Snake Eyes. People have been responding really poorly. I don't know why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take away Snake Eyes swords. Yeah. Uh, hey. Is there a character you want to see more of, Justin, on Star Girl? Uh, I mean, 
I'm I've been really enjoying the sort of team the Ocean's Eleven team coming together aspect of it. So I guess what I want to see is all of the JSA items coming together. Uh, I know uh, that's sort of not the answer, uh, not answering the question, but that's what has been most exciting for me is how they're weaving these new characters into the storyline. Somebody's got to get that fucking owl a home. That poor fucking mm -hmm. owl is heartbreaking. It's been sitting there for years. And oh, also, one... Mikey. More yeah. fucking Mikey. Yeah, more Mikey, definitely. What is going on? Is somebody screaming in the background of one of your cameras? Um, that, I think that's the dishwasher. Someone is opening the dishwasher upstairs. <laughs> okay. Very wow. loud. That's the uh, creepiest dishwasher I've ever heard. It's haunted by all the old food we ate. Uh, <laughs> great. Uh, this is from Kevin. In the spirit of Dragonfly and Dragonfly Man, what are some of your favorite in continuity prequels, or who are characters you want to see prequels for? Also, would this be an appropriate time for me to announce the subject of my quiz? Yes. Ooh. So after we have done secret quizzes, the audience is now doing a secret quiz for us. Kevin, why don't you tell us the subject and why is it Serpentor? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's definitely hope it's Serpentor. Yeah, it's Serpentor. Uh, while he's uh, commenting there, we'll read that in a second. Uh, let's talk about prequels, uh, favorite prequels, things that did them right. Mm. I mean, I'll just throw out this is not a comic book thing at all, but. Better Call Saul is maybe better than Breaking Bad. Wow. Okay. That's a strong choice. Yeah, that is uh, very wait, strong. I, I love Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. Um, I mean, no Breaking uh, Bad, though. Yeah. Uh, I do think, I mean, the year one books over uh, the DC has done have been very good sort of across the board, I feel like, mm -hmm. uh, taking uh, as prequel books. Pete, you got a prequel? I you normally don't like prequels. Um, so now, I why is it because they're going backwards in time? Yeah, it's annoying to me. What was the Punisher Vietnam story? Was it called the Nam? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was actually really good. Thank you for bringing that up. No problem. There you go. <laughs> or what about uh, what was uh, Logan? Right, the Wolverine origin story. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, that was also really good. That was good, but I would throw out the um, the Weapon X uh, that Barry Windsor Smith did way back in Marvel Comics Presents. Mm -hmm. Now that, I feel like that was like a revelation as far as uh, just giving a backstory to a character, to Wolverine like that. Yeah. Uh, someone put uh, Muppet Babies. That's that's my answer for best prequel. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, Punisher Tiny Born, that's, that's the actual name of it, not the Nom. Uh, are you, you but the saying, Nom was great, too. What what storylines do you think Muppet Babies set up that was paid off in the regular Muppets? Um, all of them. The death of Skeeter. Time. What happened to yeah, Nanny? The death of Skeeter. <laughs> Where is he? That's a Wait, gritty. Scooter. It's Scooter. The death of Scooter. Because yeah, because Skeeter's yeah. there, right? It was mainly, yeah, I there. believe Scooter's it was there. about knees. Just, you know, how knees are important. Uh, so the subject of the quiz is Catwoman, by the way. Kevin's quiz so I'm going to guess that the catchphrase is, I don't know about you, Miss Kitty, but I'm feeling a whole lot yummier. No, I, I think it's not Catwoman. I think he said it's comic book TV of the 70s. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, Joe Crack's quiz is Catwoman? There's multiple secret quizzes going on. Good, I love it. Comic book TV of the 70s. Oh. Something we have a lot of Fantastic knowledge about. Four? Okay. All right. We'll definitely think about that. Uh, let's move over to a question. Next question from YouTube. This is from The Big. What do you guys think about the rumors of Vanessa Morgan, Tony Topaz becoming the new Batwoman? Follow up. Where do you stand on chocolate chip cookies, fan or no? Uh, oh, well, <laughs> two deeply related question. questions. Oh, great. Uh, these are related. So I think we can answer both of these. Uh, first of all, I'll say is uh, Vanessa Morgan is not the new Batwoman. That is a complete and fabricated rumor. It's 100% not true. Um, how do you how do you feel about chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> how do you, uh, are you you started off, man? Where are you, where are you? Let's go well, middle what, of the road. Make yeah, a stance. no, I'm good on it. I'm good on it. I like them. You like them? <laughs> I mean, they're better when they're in a little marinara. You know what I'm talking about? Oh my god, yeah. that is gross. With a little pasta fagul. Oh man, That's I tell you, how you say that. <laughs> I uh, I went. I recently uh, got to go to a Wegmans after a long time without a Wegmans, and those Wegmans chocolate chip cookies are phenomenal. 
I thought you were going to say I recently, I recently got to go to a Wegmans after dark and do all the fucked up Wegmans <laughs> stuff they don't let you do during the day. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, I'm not uh, – chocolate chip cookies, not interested. I'm sorry, what? Take them. Take them home. What, what, is, what is your cookie? Oh, you're just one of those I don't eat sweets guy? I mean, I don't eat a lot of sweets in general. Here's what I like. Brownies. Milkshakes. Wait, you can't say I don't like sweets and then say I eat brownies. That's ridiculous. I don't. I don't eat a lot of sweets. Uh, but here's what I do like: brownies and milkshakes. That's it. Pretty much, yeah. What about like a, a brownie sundae? Uh, yeah, that's that combines brownies and um, uh, almost milkshakes. So that's basically the two things I just said I liked. All right. Cool. Yeah. But if you're yeah. offering me one of those hard ass uh, Pepperidge Farms chocolate chip cookies, you can throw that at a car and break the windshield <laughs> for all I care. <laughs> I, I, well, wanna... I will mention, interestingly enough, uh, brownie milkshakes is going to be the new Batwoman. So there. No! Oh, yeah. I think I went to, um, I took an acting class with brownie milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Great. they're doing really well for themselves. Uh, let's move on to a question from Straight Bullet. I just read Death Metal number one, and how is this in continuity, and where in all the other books is this supposed to take place? Uh, so we are going to be talking about this one on our Stack podcast tomorrow. That'll be Wednesday in the Stack feed and the Comic Book Club feed. Um, but it did. DC books are coming out on Tuesdays now, so I think we can talk about it. We can spoil it. If you haven't read it, obviously don't listen. Um, but this is... I was very confused about this leading up to it because I just kind of assumed it was a sequel to what was the name of uh, the post-apocalyptic thing that Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder did with Batman in the far future where he wakes up. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, in, their, in, their, in their run. No, 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 no. There was a separate like oh, yes, 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 yes. thing that was like um, also last night. There we go. Last night, last yeah. night on Earth. So I thought this was a sequel to Last Night on Earth. Turns out it's not at all. It's no. a uh, sequel to Dark Knights, the thing with the dark multiverse where that's yeah. invading the DC universe. So this is the idea of this book, having read it now and having read a little bit more after I read it. It's all in continuity. It is all taking place in the DC universe. This is following up on a bunch of different events, including Dark Knights, including uh, Doomsday Clock, because they're working in all the Watchmen stuff and all the stuff that happened with Wally West after that. Uh, it's also picking up right after his Justice League run. So it's following up on that stuff. So this is basically like the culmination of everything that has happened in the DC universe over the past couple of years. Yeah. It's uh, it's cool. I mean, it's fun. It's very yeah, like I mean, it's death metal. It's you know, I mean, they're making ACDC jokes. I mean, it's it's over the top. I was surprised it started with the Sarge. Um, uh, I'm Sarge, yeah, Rock. Sarge Rock. Sarge Rock. Oh yeah. It's that like your it, it's like your older brother took all your toys from your toy chest and painted them black and fucked them up and then gave them <laughs> back to you. And he's like, here you go, play with these now, idiot. Yeah, make a store out of this a hole. Yeah. Uh, fun stuff, though. Definitely check that out. Uh, let's move over to a question here from YouTube. Nelson Martinez says, what did you guys think of the PS5 reveal? And did you guys plan on purchasing one on launch day? Man, the last Ooh. video game system I purchased was a Wii U. And that was a year <laughs> ago. So I don't think I'll be getting a PS5. Anytime that was soon. a year ago. Wow. It was a year wow. ago. Yeah. I got you beat, man. I, you know, I got a, a Nintendo that I last purchased, and that was a lot more than a year ago. <laughs> An NES? Really? Do you still have the power pad, Pete? Oh, I wish I still had my power pad. Do you have Rob, the robot? Nope. You no. know, when I was a kid, when I was young, that's the one we got, the robot one, the worst wow. one. That robot, we played a game called Gyroscope. Remember that? Mm -hmm. The whole yeah. thing was the robot would pick up spinning gyroscopes. It was I never very stupid. that robot. That looked really dumb. I had a friend named Ben who had it, and I went over his house. We used to trade NES games back and forth, and he got the robot. He's like, check this out. I got Rob the Robot. And we played it, and we're like, this is cool. <laughs> and then cool. stopped playing it after like two minutes. It felt cool to have a robot in your house. Like, look at this mm -hmm. robot. But, boy, all that robot could do is lift these gyroscopes and put them down in a game called Gyromite, which was very <laughs> boring. <laughs> it's a great uh, conversation. So... 
lot of fun. To play. Yes, very excited about the Miles Morales Spider Man game. To answer your question, yes, um, I uh, got a Switch last year and have been playing more games than ever before, uh, or at least in the last like ten or fifteen years. Beard. Yes, that's why I'm up late at night playing fucked up games, and growing my <laughs> hair out. Uh, Wait, I have a but, question for you, actually, uh, just to do more business during the show. Uh, did you have you played Breath of the Wild? Here's what happened. I <laughs> got um, Link's uh, Awakening. Is that what it's called? The mm -hmm. other Zelda game and Breath of the Wild at the same time. Played Link's Awakening. Played the shit out of Link's Awakening. <laughs> so good. Great game. Got Breath. Started Breath of the Wild. I was like, oh, my God. I got to just ride around on this horse and this field and stuff. It felt like work. It felt like I was, especially under a quarantine, I was like, I don't want to just wander around outside. <laughs> I'm not supposed to do that. So I've been I've retreated to a bunch of Metroidvania uh, games. I played Blaster Master Zero Two, which was a blast, wow. and now I'm playing Hollow Knight, uh, which is great. All right, good to know. Reason I ask we'll, is we'll also give Breath of the Wild another shot. It just was the wrong moment to start. Playing yeah. That. The reason I ask is my son and I have been playing through Twilight Princess uh, for the yeah. Wii. That's one of the games yeah. that I got for the Wii that we're, we're playing on the Wii U. And it's like the first real video game that he's played. Uh, and he loves it and is keeps asking me about all the other Zelda games, is very into the idea of playing Breath of the Wild. But I'm not sure if it's going to bore him to tears or not and turn him off video games forever. So oh. see what happens. Yeah, it's a wander. Hmm. Interesting. He might like that. He might just like riding a horse. We'll see what happens. Uh, question uh, from Joe Crack. If the idea of separating the art from the artist, are there any artists for whatever reason you just can't separate from their work anymore? Hmm. Interesting. What is that like in relationship to... I assume in, in relationship to like misdeeds in real life. Like hmm. uh, this is a terrible example, but I, I remember very specifically one of the writers when I was at MTV, when all the Bill Cosby allegations broke, uh, writing a story about like, I grew up on the Cosby show. I'm a black writer. How do I deal with loving that and that forming so much of my identity while knowing what we know about this man? Um, yeah. So in terms of that, Ultimately, she was like, I will still take the memories that I had before about the Cosby show, but I'm never going to watch it again. Um, I guess the question here is, are there people that you continue to enjoy the art, even though you don't enjoy the artist? Yeah, I mean, I, I, oh. I have the same stance as, um, as the writer you're describing. Like, I don't I feel like we can't blame ourselves for enjoying the thing a, a person who we realize later is bad has made when we enjoyed it without that information. But I find that on the flip side of that, I find it hard to, once I know too much about a writer or, or artist or any sort of creator to be like, well, I'm gonna uh, hunker down and spend my time watching this thing that I know this person made and was maybe doing, it just, it just ruins the piece, I think, once you know something that bad about someone. Yeah, I mean, just to talk about it specifically because it's already popping up here in the comments, the two things, uh, not the two things that happened today, but the two big names that came out today uh, before we taped the show, Cameron Stewart, who's a comic book artist, apparently yes. has a long history of harassing and potentially other things. People, I honestly did not read into it too much, so I'm not going to consider myself an authority on it, but uh, there was that. And then the second one that came out that's pretty big is Warren Ellis. There was a whole oh. thread about it with... Sorry, with several people backing them up. Here's the thing, though. I would recommend reading that thread. I don't remember the name of the writer, uh, and I'm very sorry about that. But uh, she specifically said she was like, I thought it was a very well-measured thread that gets to the heart of what we're talking about here, where she said, has he done amazing things for the industry? Has he really lifted up voices? Has he changed the way that comics have been made? Yes. Is he also fucking Bluebeard? Yes. Both of those things could be true at the same time. Bluebeard. Which... Bluebeard, I mean, again, like this is, it was a Twitter thread. It was not the place to be like, here's a list of wrongs that happened from Warren Ellis. But first of all, of course, we're going to believe them. It had is 100% believable across the board because the comic industry has a long history of hiding and washing over and brushing over misdeeds just so they can continue to walk with pe work with people, which is awful. Um, but what she is saying there is 
and again, I'm paraphrasing the tweets, so please go find them and don't just listen to me about it. But she was saying, listen to the people who have these experiences, uh, hear what they are saying, understand what they are saying. Also know that there are good things that a person could do and bad things. And you need to be able to talk yeah. about both of them. And that felt like a very fair point to me. It's not about forgiving the person. It's about uh, understanding the circumstances more than anything. Hmm. I, I haven't I, read any of that Warren Ellis stuff. I'm very curious to check that out. And I saw the Cameron Stewart, some of those tweets, and I was like, oh, not great. I mean, I'll tell you, like, very specifically, because his name keeps coming up in this as well, it is extremely hard for me to think positively about a Brian Wood book at this point because of all the things right. that have come up uh, regarding him in the comic industry as he has serially harassed various women there. Um, we've talked about DMZ and other books that he's done quite a bit, and they're really well-done books, um, that I don't think it invalidates the fact that we like them and talked about them previously, but... At the same time, I don't feel a need or a want or an interest to go back and revisit those books again. Right. Yeah, I haven't reread since all that uh, news came out. I haven't reread any of his books, but I, I do think fondly of a lot of the Brian Wood work. So it's, it's, it's kind it's of a complicated hard. subject. It's complicated. Yeah. And well, and I think the other thing is like it comes down to your own personal relationship with these works more than anything. So the thing that makes it tricky is, uh, I'm I'm not totally against a mob mentality, to be honest, but I do think this mob mentality comes in in terms of like, no, cancel this person. I don't care what you think. What you think is stupid. But if a person related to a thing and it changed their life in some way and they still feel like it changed their life, even though they hate that person going forward, don't invalidate their feelings on it at the same time. Right. Yeah. That's all. Oh, man. P Peter, you're right. <laughs> you just you're came okay, back from. Just came back yeah, from I just was uh, looking at it and then looking at all of Warren Ellis's stuff, and I was like, that's a shit ton of stuff, man, that he contributed. And it's fucking heartbreaking. It's fucking heartbreaking. Again, it's up to you. Like, I think. Can you cancel the person based on this? Absolutely. Does it make them a despicable, gross person? Yeah, probably. But does it invalidate the art that is up to your personal take on it, I think, more than anything? It doesn't have to be mine. I'm certainly going to have to reevaluate my relationship with Warren Ellis's comics at this point and based on the things that I'm sure we'll hear about more in the coming days. Um, but that is up to the individual person to judge individual yeah. person to judge excuse me cool heavy stuff uh let's <laughs> move on to another question here uh this one is from hollywood homer as podcasters what are your some of your favorite podcasts fresh air and the moth do count nice <laughs> Brief, quick change of topic here yeah uh great um i listen to um I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a screenwriting podcast called Script Notes that I like a lot. I listen to um, The Watch, uh, one of the Ringer podcasts about TV and film. Uh, I listen to uh, The Daily. I listen to some Pod Save America stuff, especially the Dan Pfeiffer episodes. A lot of politics stuff all across the board. Pete, podcasts? I no, you, you don't even I, listen to our podcasts. No, no, I don't like podcasts. Uh, but uh, Liwana has uh, had us listen to uh, the Wolverine stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Her, yeah, and that's been very enjoyable. Uh, it's some high quality stuff, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and it's fun to be like, uh, to be kind of like a know it all before they announce like the name. I'm like, they're talking about Gambit, it's Gambit, you know, that's fun, but like, um. Yeah, I have. A, it's just one of those things where podcasts for me, uh, I would I like to have like videos on in the background. Um, so I'll go to like YouTube and just kind of play interviews and stuff like that. Um, and yes. he, but it's you know, you I do usually start out like comedians, yeah. It's usually you, like you love watching like a two and a half minute interview, um, over and over again, I believe. 
Oh yeah, especially if it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have not been listening to a lot of podcasts recently because I've been trapped in an apartment with my children who don't need to listen to adult themed podcasts. Yeah, because um, you like stuff. weird adult themed podcasts, Alex. Uh, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, you know. Hey, let me get you in know. here. What are you? Tell me about these adult themed <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> I, I want to tell you about them. I Don't tell you all stop about this. Them. Okay. Here Are these like wanna, uh, small uh, favors? The Pete, put your, Pete, put your earbuffs on. It's time Pete. for me to tell you about the podcast, Pete. Pete, you're not going to want to hear this because he's just <sighs> fucked up. Podcast no, just any things that have like cursing in it or anything like that. I'm not going to listen to it. Ah, kids around. Gotcha. Uh, but the ones uh, I listen to Doughboys a lot. I enjoy that. I love fun. Doughboys. Uh, Doughboys great. is great. Uh, it, it's uh, comedy and food, two of my favorite uh, things. So that's bringing that together nicely. I knew Mitch from Doughboys um, a long time ago. Uh, my comedy group toured with um, the Birthday Boys for a couple years. And Mitch is one of the nicest dudes. I love how successful Doughboys is. Uh, yeah. Great. Great podcast. You gonna uh, my buddy Gaber says hi in podcast High and Mighty. Uh, check that out. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I went to a live day. Uh, Pete came to see me do a show in Philadelphia a while back, which is fun. Yeah, uh, I, listen, I listen to Blank Thanks. Check sometimes. Uh, we have uh, yeah. we've had Griffin Newman on the show Griffin. before, and he's always fun. Uh, that's crazy deep dives into movies they do a really good job over there um also riverdale podcast i listened to dial m for maple quite a bit the onions podcast uh and oh god there's another one i'm blanking the name of um i'll look it up later uh but there you go podcast uh, my, my, my favorite podcast to listen to is um the episodes of comic book club that i'm not on <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh, number one listen Wow. I mean, I'll tell you what, like, this is super shitty, but I do usually listen back to our podcasts through an app just to sort of do like a quality check on them. And mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of times where like I'm doing the quality check and then I finish the podcast because it's fun. To you guys are funny <laughs> guys. You're funny guys. <laughs> My favorite podcast is our podcast. Those are the oh, only wow. ones we listen to at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here we got another <laughs> one uh, from Edward Doherty. Does the Dark Knight still stand up to your first reaction to the movie? Um, that is a very good movie that goes one act too far. Yeah, I think so. Wow. Um, that movie is uh, a five to seven act movie. Um, most movies, yes. three acts. Um, so you could say it's many acts too long. Um, I don't know. I haven't rewatched it in a while. I'd be curious if those movies don't feel like a little overwrought just across the board uh, these days or like self-serious. I feel like they were self-serious back then, um, but I I'd be curious. I mean, to me, Heath Ledger's Joker is always going to stand uh, the test of time just because it's such an amazing uh, performance and – uh, regardless of how I feel about other stuff or how well things hold up like that to me, I can, I can never get tired of watching that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> that part where it's like, do you feel in control? Uh, that's yeah. Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, was that Bane? Bane? Yep. <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> a different movie. That's a movie. <laughs> that is, <laughs> movie. Uh, that's the best one, though. That's the best one, The Dark Knight Rises. No. My favorite no. Dark Knight is when he goes, go ahead, make my day. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, love, love, I love when Commissioner Gordon turns to Batman and goes, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Jay Citizen, if I were a superhero, which of you should I trust my secret identity with? Oh, come on, I'm a vault. You, Pete? That's right. No, no, one hundred percent. You're the worst in secrets. Secret for five years. Five years, I held a secret. <laughs> that yeah, was that's secret like someone everybody. told you. That was your secret. <laughs> that's not the same thing. Ne neither one of you guys knew about it, so I did my job. <laughs> your job from yourself. Well, clearly, we all think ourselves. So there you go. The only uh, way to that is for you, uh, Jay, to tell us a secret and see which one of us blows it first. Yeah, um, I do think, uh, though, that if, you, if someone said something to either one of us and said, hey, this is a secret, it's important you don't tell anybody, 
I feel like me and Justin would do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> really? Than me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, <because laughs> Alex, you mentioned one of your articles or something. Yeah, you or... would be free, but like, well, at my job, I do this, and you know, it would come out. I mean, there's plenty of stuff I haven't told you guys. Oh, fuck! What? Tell me. <laughs> all right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Here's yeah, there it is. Yeah. Uh, over on, oh, yes, uh, just to answer uh, Radlib over on YouTube, did the guys mention the accusations against Cameron Stewart and Morris Ellis that have been talked about we on did. Twitter today? Uh, yes, in fact, we did. Uh, and let's see, we got another question over here. Oh, from Straight Bullet. This is a good one to end on. Hey, uh, what are you guys drinking? I don't know why we're all so interested in this every week, but I'd still like to know. Uh, great question. What are we all drinking today? Pete, you seem ready with a beer bottle. What's going on? Oh, yeah. A little, a little uh, big wave. Uh, yeah, I love that Kona. Uh, yeah, this reminds me of when uh, we were down uh, over like Eldridge Street. Uh, what the hell was Fontanas. the name? Fontanas. Fontanas, yeah. Uh, we would get drink tickets. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good time. We would drink those Konas and uh, that bartender who truly was maybe the worst bartender I've ever encountered. <laughs> he didn't he, he didn't know anything about anything. He would pour us uh whiskey shots to drink after the it show. It was very nice. Yeah, yeah. He's well, great guy. there weren't a lot of customers in there and we did tip him. Uh but truly I, he was, every time I ordered a drink I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> As a bartender I was like, "It's just stressful to watch someone not know how to you like hold." So it. nice. Such yeah, a nice guy. Very nice. Very nice. Terrible bartender. Truly. Uh, what do you got going on, Justin? What are you I'm drinking? I'm drinking a um, Bell's uh, Bohemian Pilsner Lager of the Lakes. Uh, very Ooh. nice. Uh, light fancy. beer. Great. And uh, I'm drinking um, Hennessy. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, you are not. What just happened? Alex. No Cognac, no. man. Getting that Henny hit. Okay. Hey, you Henny, bro. What is up with you, dude? I love this. Uh, I would like to say, first off, <laughs> I don't say this a lot, but much respect, Zalvin. <laughs> that is the baller shit. That is the baller shit. Much respect. Oh, I can't believe you said that. I oh, love my it. God. Uh, I this is one of my uh, when people ask about the drinking, when we did the last Star Girls podcast, I was pretty lit because I just discovered um, when you order KFC, they have a Mountain Dew flavor called Sweet Lightning. That and a little vodka. Mwah, mwah. What, Does I that feel like you every... try to rip it out of your mouth? Is that what yeah, that's that sounds? <laughs> Pete, I feel like every time we talk to you, you're like, oh, I found this new Mountain Dew flavor. And I'm like, that's not real, man. Someone's <laughs> fooling. Someone's taking the label off and writing like, oh, Mountain Dew flaming hot piss. You got to try this their new flavor. Uh, good times. Uh, all right. That is it for your questions. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, okay, we are going to move it on with our next section, which is trivia. And for that, we're going to turn it over to Pete LePage. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, so before we get back to the level of the audience, it's an opportunity to win $25 free dollars in the gift card of Midtown Comics. Uh, we just need a uh, first hand up to, you know, nobody. First stand up, a little first stand up, twenty five dollars yeah. comments. Let's see, just type first or hand or up or anything like that. Oh, oh we got on. one. We got there one. Oops, hold on. I'm gonna grab him, throw him into the stream here. We're gonna get old Josh, old Joshy into the stream. Old Joshy, old Joshy. Joshy wants to take a chance at a prize. <laughs> Bring him in. <laughs> Joshy wants to give it a shot. Uh, let's uh, see if Joshy's got what it takes to tolerate this quiz here, for five yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, when evil Justin gets drunk. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Pete, you want to set up how the quiz works? Sure, I'm going to read you a question, listen to all three possible answers, get all uh, three questions right, $25 will be yours. Josh, what's up? 
Oh, not much. How are you guys? There's Joshy. <clears throat> Welcome. Man, good to see you. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, all right, so today's trivia is on topical comic news. All right, here we go. Question number one. <laughs> there is a new YA novel coming out pitting the Court of Owls against whom? Is it A, Black Canary, B, Nightwing, or is it C, Henry Simmons? So it's either A, or a. you could pick B. Yes, nice. you are correct. Yeah. Black Josh. Mary going up against the Court of Owls. Here we go. Question number two. What DC writer will be teaching a master class at the Kubert School? Hint, he attended the school 20 years ago as an artist. Is it A, Jim Lee, B, Jeff Johns, or C, Daryl Sabaro? Sabaro. Sorry. So it's either A, don't pick it, or go with B. B. B is correct. Jeff wow. Wow. School as follow. an artist. Interesting. Fun fact. Huh. Pete? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What? what? Oh, Pete, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. Do the question again, Pete. Okay. Question number three. R.I.P. Denny O'Neill. In his honor, DC mm. is making what comic free to download until June 23rd? Is it A. Green Lantern number 76, B. Green Arrow number 200, or C. Bobcat Goldthwait? So it's either A. If you would like $25, a. or something else. Yes, you are that correct. Is. Incredible. Congratulations, Josh. You have won a $25 gift card to Midtown Comics. Shoot us an email at comicbookclublive at gmail.com with your information, your address, and phone number, and we will get that digital gift card out to you so you can get some free comics. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks, Bye. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so uh, Kevin was correct. And the winner is World's Greatest Dad is the name of the Robin Williams movie that had uh, Henry Simmons, Daryl Sabara, and Bobcat Goldthwait. And gentlemen, happy Father's Day to both of you. Oh, thank you <laughs> oh, for this present, nice. Pete. Really what appreciate it. Gift. Now, as we all know, tomorrow is new comic book day. Uh, what is coming out that you dudes are looking forward to? Lots of stuff is happening. Finally, comics are back open. The economy of comics is reopening. It's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll start it off just to give you two a minute to look it up. I'm looking forward to Tartarus number three is coming from mm, Image Comics. Oh, yeah. This book has been wild, like absolutely wild. Same, it feels... Yeah like the best of old European costume comics, like the Incal and other things like that. And I've just been really, really enjoying it quite a bit. What about you, Pete? What are you looking forward to? Well, I got two and I feel bad cause I'm going to take Justin's, but uh, uh, the first one that isn't going to be on the stack is Gideon falls. Number 22. I mean, mm -hmm. it's Jeff Lemire, so it's going to be weird. It's going to be worth checking out. And then, uh, Birthright number 44. I mean, Whoa. Oh, wow, you're really stealing my thunder there. Um, that's cool. Yeah, this issue of Birthright, um, if I can talk about it for a hot sec, uh, we talked to uh, Josh about it, and it is all like full page spreads. Yeah. The entire I really massive. Wish we issue. interviewed him now because after this issue, I mean, holy shit. Yeah, uh, great stuff. Yeah. Really great uh, stuff. And we're going to have reviews for much of that stuff in the Stack podcast tomorrow at 9 a.m. That's Wednesday at 9 a.m. in the Stack feed as well as the Comic Book Club feed. So check all that out. And that is it for the show, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you all so much. So much. Uh, first of all, thank you to our amazing guests, Kyle Latino and Tom Payer. Go pick up Savage Beard of She Dwarf and also Dragonfly and okay. Dragonfly Man. A couple of things to plug on our end. As mentioned earlier, we have a Star Guys podcast uh, all about Star Girl. That's in its own feeds. Also, we just started a boys recap podcast called Let's Hear It for the Boys. Let's hear it out. for the boys. 
that's going to be coming out weekly on Friday, so definitely check that out. Also, next week, we have a big show right here on the Internet to Crowdcast and YouTube. Guests are going to be Dan Slott talking all about Woo-hoo. Iron Man 2020 and other things, yeah. as well as George Gustinas from the New York Times, and we're going to have him on for the stack section, so that should be a lot of fun. If you want to support us, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe and listen to the show at Comic Book Live on Twitter, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and many more. Folks, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Good night, guys. Thank you. Lose to that penny. No shit. Good night, everybody. Thanks.